Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of the Trevor Carpenter Photo Challenge. I'm Steve Trelletti and this week is week 32. And the theme I chose for this week, quite simple, being by a body of water, a river, a <laughs> great blue heron just passed by, it's water and water critters. So just about anything that has to do with water and the creatures that live in that water. It doesn't have to be a river, it can be a lake, it could be a pond. We can even go into our backyard with backyard bird feeders, etc. This is going to be a COVID-19 friendly photo challenge. So just follow your local COVID-19 guidelines. And the important part here is to have fun with photography. So let's define what we can do with this challenge uh, in an urban nature area. Well, I, I guess you can take pictures of geese in conflict, <laughs> like the ones right behind me. Uh, one of them's not happy. And actually, let's, let's go take a look. You know what? While we're blogging, might as well show you what I have here. Now, this is typical of this area. Lots of ducks, lots of geese, and they just kind of showed up while I was uh, vlogging here. Uh, so you can see it's a very nice rich environment to do uh, any type of wildlife photography by water. And this time of year in the uh, nor northern hemisphere uh, this is what we have. Uh, we have nesting uh, critters, geese. These are Canada geese. I have one coming right here close to me and it's gonna be a little curious that's for sure and they're used to being fed by people and that I won't be feeding them they also go near the grass in this area uh, they feed on a lot of the seeds and and just grass and lawn and this is just kind of what feeding time is for them Well, that was a welcome little interlude from these geese. Uh, that I got, you know, there's like, uh, I'd say you've got a good 20, 30 of them feeding right in front of me now. They've, they've left the water and they're in the grassy rolling hills in front of me uh, feeding. So, uh, you know, that covers pretty much the, the wildlife as far as waterfowls, ducks and geese in, in water. But we're not limited to that. Uh, we've got macro photography there, you know, on the banks of this river. I can find anything from giant fishing spiders to all kinds of other little insects and those insects are important because they're even a source of food for a lot of the birds that nest in this area. Um, as far as what's going to go on in water and wildlife, well, we're pretty much limited to, to birds, gators, uh, predators like crocodiles, uh, etc. If we're going to expand ourselves and, and remove ourselves from the wildlife to critter area, then we have uh, landscape possibilities, waterscape possibilities. Now the water behind me is really calm and I, you know I could make it mirror looking with a long exposure and get some great reflections uh, uh, if the lighting was fine, if I had a, a sunset or, or something nicer to, to just reflect in, that would be really nice. You can also find yourself with lots of rapid current and that's a whole different challenge and maybe not extra long exposures but like one second exposures will give you detail in your water as well as they'll give you uh, just that that flow that that little one second flow where you actually can feel the movement and the power behind the water when you're photographing rapids let's bring this home for you not all of you can come out right now uh, some of you are stuck at home for multiple reasons you can be a little more vulnerable there's still lockdowns in your area parks like this and open spaces like this are not open for public use uh, we have people joining us from all around the world so I want to make sure you know this challenge can really be adapted to everyone and everyone's gonna have fun with it so let's take a closer look at some creative ideas I found on the internet and hopefully they'll inspire you for this week's water photo challenge. First off, a video I found on TikTok. Basically you create your own water puddle from a water bottle and you take advantage of water's natural reflective properties. If you're going to use a cell phone, a smartphone, usually the cameras at the top, turn your phone upside down, 
bring it closer to the ground, that will allow you to fully take advantage of the reflection. Sports. If you're doing sports photography, competitive swimming, there might not be any meets going on, but there's probably some people practicing alone. Uh, just ask, I'm sure there'll be willing participants to your photography. Other sports in water, water polo, there's also synchronized swimming. Uh, you might be able to find something. If you've got one of these, an action camera, in this case a GoPro, I'm right now I'm filming with an Osmo action camera. Both of those are fully, fully waterproof. Some phones are waterproof, but you can also get casings for them just like you can for certain cameras. Now this is going to allow you to take pictures like this, you know, half in the water, half out of the water. Uh, you, you can just like, you know, experiment a lot with that. Also, portraiture underwater. It's kind of weird, but you know, give it a try. Uh, or just, you know, play in the pool. I mean, it's it's warm out, it's summer, uh, it's been extremely warm this year, I don't know if it is for you guys all over the place, uh, but just take advantage of the water, if it's this time of year for you in the northern hemisphere, you're in luck and just try it out. If it's too cold, you can still take advantage of a pool at home, take advantage of the reflective properties of water, and in this case, we, you know, we just have a portrait. Pets. Pets are great to play with with water, whether you're splashing them from the pool, uh, just with a water spigot, and I'll just follow the flow of water. Uh, the, you know, it's a great way to give them the attention they need and to keep them cool in warm summer days. If you don't have a pool, you've got to have a sprinkler, a hose, or something you can take advantage of. Maybe you can get to a, some sort of water park. I know here in the area we have quite a few uh, just at, you know, in just regular parks, even if there's no pool. Uh, all depends on your COVID restrictions, but there's a way to just get some water flowing and just have some fun with the children. Now again with pets. Now cats and water don't mix too well. My parents' cats do this with flowing water. This one's licking off just to drop off the spigot. Uh, but again, you know, just take advantage of what you have. Pets make great subjects. Rainfall. When it rains on a hard surface like your street or sidewalk, etc., you know, this is just a great effect and, and you know, as the raindrops hit, they splash. Now this done with a kind of a quick picture, but if you take a long, long exposure, let's say at least like 30 seconds, you'll get kind of an abstract look to it. it, it it's, it's a great look of an image if you can do it. You've got to keep dry, maybe someone hold an umbrella over you, maybe do it from your balcony with a telephoto lens. Uh, can get out of the house, you don't want to get exposed, you want to stay safe. If it's raining out, take advantage of like, you know, the texture water effect, the, the beady water on the, uh, on the glass of your car and just, you know, work with some street photography with that. Here we have, a, a, you know, this is all composition. You know, at first I thought I had a subject sitting on a wall and it had me captivated. You know, it's how you captivate your audience. You've got to look at it for a few seconds to figure out it's really, you know, a shadow with a reflection of someone standing on the ground and in a basin of water, you're basically capturing their reflection. It, it boggled my mind for a little bit. It's just a great image, all in the composition. It's great. If you're at home, a little bit of oil, you know, cooking oil in your water and it's going to beat up like this. Now, you can use some food coloring, you can use some, a transparent container and light up a background of colored paper or plastics or different materials. Play with your lighting. Uh, these oil bubbles are three-dimensional, so as you move your lighting around, they cast a different shadow and they do look different. If you don't want a vivid look, here you have a more subtle look that you can play with using just one color and lighting. In studio work, spray bottle on a flower, uh, or maybe other objects and, and just work that, that wet, rainy look with a house plant. Pouring water, whether you're pouring water from a, a container, uh, a water bottle, a glass bottle in this case, um, pouring water from a spigot into your hands. You could also just line up rocks and let it just flow through. Or in this case, you know, more of a um, purpose to it, you know, you're putting more hot water into a coffee maker. Here's a glass of water, 
take and view from above naturally that studio lighting it's kind of low lit and maybe even on a translucent background lit from behind again captivates your audience you've got to look at it for a couple seconds to really know what you've got there in front of you great image love to find that uh, this this exact scenery it's absolutely beautiful not sure if it's four different individuals or multiple exposures nothing keeps you from trying the same thing with a small bucket of water whether you have two three four individuals against a fence a wall or you do it with multiple exposures this is just a, a great image splashing in puddles my kids could never resist it they'd fight over it if the puddle was just too small for both of them to share it we're used to the splashing effect but here's something I like it's when you jump out of it and the water just follows your shoes uh, another great image that's inspiring we talked about bird baths with your bird feeders you know about noon two o'clock birds usually bathe get your bird bath out there if you got food you know birds will come try and keep yourself in the shade A will keep you cool B birds don't see you well in the shade or at least not as well as they would if you're in full sunshine so they'll be less weary of you so just install yourself carefully uh, make sure you may be hidden behind some a chair or a plant or something use your telephoto you can get some great images some birds will be out when it rains um, basically all birds are happy when it drizzles even when it rains a little harder this um, American Robin will be out it's a bigger bird they love to hunt worms and other insects in the ground uh, when it's raining especially worms so if they're in your area and technically I know you can find these right now uh, we have them in Florida you have them all the way north into Canada uh, they're basically all over eastern uh, eastern United States eastern Canada but I'm not sure if we go west where they are long exposures at the ocean not quite the homemade picture the home project unless you live on the beach but I love the flow gentle flow of water at the ocean and eventually if your exposures are long enough the water's going to have like this gassy looking effect I love these this one's particularly nice just with the warm tones of a sun setting or rising Here's a different perspective. Uh, again, you get that gassy feeling in the water. I absolutely love these images. What I did here, take your favorite search engine on the internet. I just did a search for creative water photography. And I came up with dozens and dozens and dozens more of inspiring ideas. So just do a little bit of homework and again, just have fun with this project. Hi everyone, Steve Trelletti. Before I go, I want to remind you, take a look at the Photo Challenge website and read the blog. That's photochallenge.tempesora.com. There's a few more important details on how to complete your challenge, but more important, there's a few more concrete examples on how to have fun with water and photography. I also want to extend a big welcome to some folks from up north in Canada, Ontario, Canada. Folks from Embassy Church are now following the photo challenge. Thank you and, and a big welcome. And I want to say a big thank you to our entire, entire Trevor Carpenter photo challenge community. And not just on my behalf, but on behalf of all the contributors who have contributed to the photo challenge for over a decade. Thank you. Also today, 1st of August, it's Swiss National Day. I'd like to extend a happy Swiss National Day to all the people in Switzerland following the Trevor Carpenter Photo Challenge. I'm going to leave you off now with a little video. It's a little slideshow, a few examples I have of water photography that doesn't involve any wildlife, just to give you a few more examples. I hope you're going to have fun with this challenge, and I'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you very much.